Okay, so I promised I wouldn't make this cringy, so I'll be boring instead. Okay, so you guys have read this on the death penalty, this whole little packet. Um, so we started with Aquinas. We just read on Tuesday what he has to say about killing in self-defense can be justified as long as, morally speaking, you're not intending the death of the attacker. Okay, so that doesn't count as intentional killing, um, which could be considered murder. All right, but here we've got the death penalty. Now, the death penalty, <clears throat> in Aquinas' view, is a form of intentional killing. Okay, uh, we're actually going to see how he uh, kind of runs into conflict with what the church's magisterium has been saying about the death penalty in more recent times. Okay, so this article, whether it's lawful to kill sinners, he doesn't specify what kinds of sinners, but it's people who commit uh, serious crimes against their neighbors, particularly. Uh, first of all, I think it's funny that he quotes this passage from Exodus, uh, wizards thou shalt not suffer to live. Okay, that's translated from the Latin Vulgate, which is translated from uh, the Hebrew and Greek in the Old Testament. But anyway, uh, people who practice witchcraft could be um, subject to the death penalty in ancient Israel. So that's what he's quoting from. But here's Aquinas' thing, okay? Um, he says, essentially, that for the sake of a common good, um, you know, you are a part of the whole that is the community. So every person is a part of their whole community, okay? Uh, and just as if you've got a diseased body part, um, it's, he says, praiseworthy and advantageous to cut away the diseased body part. So say you've got, you know, gangrene in your leg. Well, it's a good thing to cut off that leg so that the gangrene doesn't spread to the rest of the body. Okay, because it'll kill the whole body. So if the individual person is a part of the whole community and you've got one dangerous and infectious member of that community, uh, then it's praiseworthy and advantageous to kill that member of the community in order to safeguard the common good. Okay, that's the principle there. So, uh, say a murderer is compared to a dangerous and infectious body part at that point. And uh, he addresses this objection. There are two other objections he talks about here, but um, up here we can see objection three. Uh, this is somebody arguing hypothetically with Aquinas. Well, it's not good. It's never okay to do something evil in order to accomplish a good thing. Uh, so it's evil to kill a person, okay, because we're bound to have charity towards everybody. We're bound to love everybody. Uh, therefore, it is not okay to kill somebody, even for the sake of the protection of the community in terms of the death penalty, okay? So this is kind of the idea that, look, every person has a right to life. Therefore, it's always evil to kill people. Therefore, we can't kill people even to protect the community um, unless it's in self-defense, right? And this is key. So his reply to this objection is that by sinning, somebody departs from the order of reason and consequently falls away from the dignity of his manhood. In other words, he loses his human dignity, okay? This is what Aquinas says. So uh, by committing a grave sin like murder, okay, a person actually loses his human dignity, which is the basis for his right to life, okay? So although it's evil to kill a person as long as he preserves his dignity, it may actually be good to kill a man who has sinned, even as it is to kill a beast, for a bad man is worse than a beast and is more harmful. Uh, and he's citing Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher there. Okay, so Aquinas says, look, a murderer has lost his human dignity and therefore his right to life. And therefore killing a murderer, um, a la the death penalty, is basically like executing a grizzly bear who has attacked a hiker. Okay, um, he's not, you're, you're basically not killing somebody with human dignity anymore. All right. So that is a, an influential kind of traditional way of thinking about the death penalty. Okay. Now, this is the catechism prior to 2018. Okay, so in 2018, Pope Francis uh, revised the, the catechism's paragraph on the death penalty, and we'll get to that. You guys read that second, but this is what the catechism said prior to that revision. So uh, John Paul II was the Pope when this was promulgated. First of all, it talks about capital punishment and the, um, the nature of punishment, the um, kind of the purpose behind it. Talks about how public authorities, so the government has the right and the 
the duty or the obligation to inflict punishment proportionate to the gravity of the offense. Okay. Uh, primarily, the, the aim of punishment is to redress the disorder introduced by the, by the offense. So in other words, every uh, serious crime messes up the order of justice. It creates disorder in society. Okay, there's corruption in society as a result of the crime. So the primary purpose of punishment is to correct that disorder that the crime has introduced into society. And in order to do that, the government has the right to inflict punishment proportionate to the gravity of the crime. Okay, so that's important to start. Uh, when that punishment then is willingly accepted by the criminal, it assumes the value of expiation. In other words, it can have a kind of a medicinal purpose. Okay, so if you do something wrong, you accept your just punishment, then it can actually rehabilitate you, can contribute to making you no longer um, a corrupting influence in society. Okay, so the purpose of punishment is up there. Now, here's the paragraph on the death penalty. So assuming the guilty, the guilty party's identity and responsibility have been fully determined, the traditional teaching of the church does not exclude recourse to the death penalty if this is the only possible way of effectively defending human lives against the unjust aggressor. Okay. So it has, uh, it, it alludes to a traditional teaching of the church and it talks about unjust aggressors. So this is invoking that idea of legitimate self defense. Okay. Uh, if, however, non-lethal means are sufficient to defend and protect people's safety from the aggressor, authority will limit itself to such means. These are more in keeping with the concrete conditions of the common good and, here's the key, more in conformity with the dignity of the human person. And then goes on to talk about how today it's very rare that you can't protect society from a criminal um, without killing them. Okay, so... John Paul II's teaching on the death penalty, as we find it in the Catechism, um, is essentially that the death penalty is only acceptable as a form of legitimate defense of society. Okay, so it's only permissible to kill a criminal using the death penalty if that's an essentially defensive act, like we talked about on Tuesday, which means that the essential intention is to protect people. Okay. And the uh, essential circumstance is that you're not using more force than necessary. Okay. Now, this is why, at least fourth hour, sixth, seventh, eighth, yesterday we watched a little bit of Batman the Dark Knight because the Joker, I think, is a great example of somebody you can't protect society from in any other way than by killing them. Okay. So I think from a Catholic perspective, uh, the Joker is probably one of the strongest cases you can make for somebody who should be executed, okay? Uh, he, he breaks out of prison and he continues killing people and he's a massive threat and all of this, okay? All right, but note the difference here between John Paul II and Aquinas. Aquinas is saying the criminal has lost his dignity, so we can actually intentionally kill him. Whereas John Paul II is implying, right here in conformity with the dignity of the human person, implying that the criminal still has some dignity and that, therefore, it would only be justified to kill him if he still is considered an unjust aggressor. Okay. All right. Now, the revision made by Pope Francis in 2018, which has been somewhat controversial uh, because it's worded much more strongly than John Paul II's. Okay. Um, okay, so he says, recourse to death penalty, etc., cetera, uh, was long considered an appropriate response to the gravity of certain crimes and an acceptable, albeit extreme, means of safeguarding the common good. Today, however, there's an increasing awareness of, of three things, okay? Number one, that the dignity of the human person is not lost even after the commission of very serious crimes. So he says explicitly what John Paul II was saying implicitly there, okay? Even a murderer retains his human dignity. In addition, you got a new understanding of the penal sanctions, significance of the penal sanctions imposed by the state. Okay, so kind of a more rehabilitative perspective on punishment. Lastly, more effective systems of detention have been developed, which ensure the due protection of citizens, but don't 
deprive the criminal of uh, the possibility of redemption. And then here's where he gets uh, a little bit more controversial, the way he words this. Consequently, the church teaches in light of the gospel that the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person. And she works with determination for its abolition worldwide. So um, the best interpretation, the best way to understand Pope Francis is to understand him as essentially teaching the same thing that John Paul II was teaching, okay? That if you have a criminal who has committed a grave crime, but you've got him safely imprisoned, meaning that he, he's not a threat to society or even necessarily to other prisoners and prison guards, then you have successfully defended society, okay? That's the amount of force that is necessary to protect people from him. So if you go beyond that amount of force that's necessary, then that would be considered an act of aggression rather than an essentially defensive act. Okay. Uh, so morally speaking, in the United States and other developed countries with these effective systems of detention, the death penalty actually becomes a violation of human dignity because it's not strictly necessary the way that legitimate defense is okay all right and so in light of the gospel uh that he's, he makes a blanket statement that it's inadmissible all right that doesn't exclude the possibility of using it in a, in a place where there are no effective systems of, deten of detention okay so here is another way this is kind of a a visual simplified visual okay um whoops Did I just cancel this? I hope not. In any event. Um, okay, so uh, traditional contemporary perspective. So traditional perspective is over here. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas's perspective here. So a person commits a serious crime against his neighbor, like murder. Uh, he thus loses his dignity and therefore his right to life. And consequently, the death penalty is permissible and appropriate, not just as legitimate defense, but as an intentional form of killing. Uh, when it is ordered by the government as a way of restoring the order of justice for the common good of society. Okay, that's the uh, traditional view um, that you can attribute to Aquinas and others like him. Now, the contemporary perspective, which is from John Paul II, Pope Francis, and which has more authority because it's coming from the church's teaching authority as opposed to um, just a, a, a theologian like Aquinas, even though Aquinas is a major theologian. Uh, this is the position of the church's magisterium, okay? Uh, the person commits a serious crime against his neighbor, um, but the criminal retains his human dignity and his right to life, even though he remains a threat to society, okay? Therefore, the death penalty is only permissible as a form of legitimate defense, which morally speaking constitutes unintentional killing rather than intentional killing. Hence, the death penalty is only permissible when there's no other effective way of protecting society from the criminal. Otherwise, that would involve using more than necessary force. And so it wouldn't be an essentially defensive act. Okay, however, given modern prison systems, the death penalty is rarely, if ever, the only way to protect society from the criminal. Therefore, it is rarely, if ever, permissible in modern society, and it should be abolished wherever possible. Okay. All right, so that is the, the contrast there, and that's uh, a point of contention. You will still find Catholics who are advocating this uh, kind of Thomistic perspective, okay? But the teaching authority of the church has ver been very consistent um, in, in stating that the death penalty needs to be abolished where possible, okay? All right, so that's the gist of that. And we'll continue on to just war theory, and then we'll wrap up the 